you are losing weight because you want to feel better, be in less pain, be healthier, all of these these things, that's half of it. Okay. Seriously, I have no problem with fat people. I think they're beautiful, I'm all for body positivity or whatever. I just don't want to be fat. Actively not wanting to be fat is fat phobia. And therefore, you're fat phobic. So it's fat phobic to not want to be fat? Yeah, actively not wanting to be fat is fat phobic. Being fat is a choice. Size isn't generally a choice. So you're telling me that if I hit the gym to maintain my figure, then that's fine. But if I try to maintain my figure because I don't want to be fat and gain weight, then that's my phobic. I hate my own generation of lost hope. We are doomed. What happened to my body, my choice? When a fat person themselves want to be thin, then why can't a thin person complain about not wanting to be fat? This person said not wanting to be poor is classed as a joke. This person replies saying yes if you spend your time thinking about how much you don't want to be poor. So, if somebody doesn't want to go to the gym because they don't want to have muscles and they don't want to be bulky, they don't want to be have a six pack, are they fit phobic? Like, what are we talking about? What, what is going on? Like, at, at, at what point do we, someone step in and say, okay, y'all are crazy. Y'all need to stop, 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 and start doing, making healthier decisions in life. Positivity movement kept me f***ing fat. Okay, this is the part that got me f***ed up. First, I agree with some of this shit. Appreciating your body in spite of flaws, sure. Feeling confident about your body, yeah. Loving yourself, absolutely. But accepting your body's shape and size, that's where you got me f***ed up. Body positivity also means enjoying the body you have and not beating yourself up over changes that happen naturally due to aging and pregnancy, absolutely. But lifestyle choices, absolutely not, dude. Are you kidding me? If your lifestyle choices are actively harming your body, there's nothing positive about that. When I was almost 200 pounds and I was pre-hypertensive and pre-diabetic at 19 years old, and when people were telling me, just love yourself, embrace body positivity, like, there was nothing f***ing positive about anything that I was doing. Self-love should be about loving yourself and taking the best f***ing care of yourself. So when I was 19 and I was obese and I was already having health issues, the best f***ing thing I ever did was look at myself in the mirror and tell myself, holy f***, if you do not make changes, you are going to go down a road that you are not going to be able to turn back from. That's what self-love is. You should love yourself the way you are, the way you design. You shouldn't look at someone else and say man i want i want a butt like hers or i want a chest like his i want arms like his because you're you're simply not built like that i, I can't look at arnold schwarzenegger and say i want to be his height his size i wasn't blessed with that but i should want to maximize and look the very best that i can potentially look that's body positivity to me how your life choices became a positive thing even when they're negative that makes no sense so if i want to smoke cocaine and, or snort cocaine and, and um, smoke or um, inject heroin all the time. All of y'all should just accept that. None of my family should complain about it. Uh, my kids, they, they should be all right with it. They shouldn't, I, I shouldn't have to worry. My wife shouldn't, have, you, you see what I'm saying? It makes no sense. If I'm doing something that's detrimental to myself and I don't have anyone around me to call it out, then then that's shame on me for, for not surrounding myself with people that actually love and care about me. But for the people that have those people around them and they're simply saying that they're judging me, maybe you need to get shamed a little bit. So I heard that um, shaming people builds character, which it, it usually typically does. Are fat phobic on this platform. You should be uncomfortable. You should be uncomfortable. It is irresponsible to come on an app where there are vulnerable young people and be so fat phobic to spread such hate and harm and do it under the guise of caring about people and making it about people not caring about themselves. You don't get to do that. And it's tolerated too much. And it's made light of heart too much. Fat phobia should make you uncomfortable because it is intertwined with every single other system of oppression that exists. What are we doing, man? <laughs> what are we doing? If, mm, 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 Lord help us. So I own a gym, um, me and my brother own a gym. And one of the major reasons that people come to join that are overweight, that are obese, uh, one of the first things that they say, man, they're tired of not being able to 
walk up the stairs without being winded, walk to work without being winded, struggle to get inside their car, put their seatbelt on, little day-to-day -day things that they're uncomfortable. Speaking of uncomfortable, she said uncomfortable several times. They don't want to be uncomfortable anymore in their own skin. So, hmm, maybe we need to change the, the definition of fat phobic. See me, I can't eat anything, but you got, huh? This should be what was considered fat phobic. This is nothing right about this video at all. Nothing right about what this girl's about to do. You got a cucumber chili over here, eating everything, but I can't eat anything. What? If there was ever a video deserving of the mind your own business message, it's this one. To film somebody in public, to shame them, to make fun of them because of their size, their weight, all because you're upset you can't eat because you have a disease? Really? Shame on you. But hey, this is the culture we live in. This is what social media has become. We will do anything for likes and attention. We will film somebody to post on social media to shame them just to become social media famous, just to go viral. Who cares about their feelings? Just do what you want. This is absolutely disgusting. I can't believe somebody thought this was okay to do to another human being. To this woman, if you ever see this, I am so sorry this happened to you. And to the woman filming, you need to do better. Mind your own business. You're overweight. Like just Shout out you know, brought up a really like mind blowing point. When you're being fat phobic, you're also being a little bit classist. Have you heard of this argument? I have not heard of that. When you're somebody who has less money, it's a lot easier to be overweight. To buy a whole meal at a grocery store is a lot more expensive. But if you go like to say a McDonald's, they have like a dollar. Or little Caesars. Or, yeah, you can get pizza for ten dollars. This cat. This cat. Right off the bat. This cat. I have a video that I um made years ago talking about the difference in eating healthy and with the breakdown, you can literally go to Walmart and spend under $3 a meal um, by eating healthy. So this is this is straight cap. Now, if you're talking about pizza, feeding the whole family with pizza, maybe you can argue the price difference. But when it's all said and done, that price of that, um, that hospital bill is going to come out to a lot more than what that food would have been if you just would have spent a couple extra, couple extra dollars to um, save your life. To feed your whole family and like groceries that would come out to what like 30 40 bucks or 50 depending on how big your family is to even have time to work out is also a privilege a lot of people who are like lower income they're working to get by bro they're working long hours long shifts they're not gonna have time to even work out like obviously gonna be overweight or like they're too tired to cook so they're just buy a piece of pizza it's not necessarily anybody's fault right it's not necessarily an, an ugly thing because people can't help but be overweight we hand people excuses y'all realize that it's getting to the point that we're giving people excuses and things to run with rather than just doing something about out and making changes in their life you don't have to have a gym membership to work out yeah it helps i'm a big fan of resistance training i'm a big fan of um weight lifting i'm a big fan of the cardio machines here and there but you don't need that you can literally wake up go outside go for a walk if it's too cold outside you can literally walk up and down the stairs do a couple burpees do a couple push-ups do a couple squats and be perfectly fine get in shape right in the comfort of your own home I will not associate with you if you're fat. That's when it matters because... No, I totally get it because I actually don't associate with people who have adult braces. And if you're thinking, Erin, that's me and she can't help but have not straight teeth. Some people just don't have not straight teeth. I think you just ran into the point. See what I mean? See what I mean? Like, she just compared being overweight to having straight teeth. Let me just let that sink in. What's a scam that's become so normalized that we don't even realize it's a scam anymore? That diabetes and heart disease is hereditary, that you have some kind of gut issue, skin problem, or that you're just supposed to be in pain as you get older. Or this one, it just runs in the family. No, bad decisions run in the family. Newsflash, and I know you don't want to hear it, but diet and exercise are a cure-all. But don't scroll away yet. It's the most affordable and most accessible remedy to most health ailments. But why don't they prescribe that first? You know why. The true scam is the industry of temporary relief and never curing the problem. Like I live in Michigan, for example, and we have cavernous potholes on the street because we use salt on the roads every winter. Year after year, what do they do? They just patch the pothole up with asphalt. After years of this, you now have a road full of patched up potholes that now act as speed bumps. When we could just fix the root of the problem, the salt that we put on the roads, or in your body for that matter. Follow me. So one thing you pointed out was how you could just fix the root. We, me and my brother went to a convention, um, a health convention, might I add. In that health convention, we sat and listened to them talk. Presidents of the hospitals, the leaders of the hospitals, the people that are pretty much keeping that show 
afloat, making sure it's running smoothly, making sure it's running correctly. Not one time, when I say not one time, did they talk about prevention, they only talked about accommodation. They did not talk about prevention. They only talked about accommodation, making the experience more useful or more helpful and easier for the people that come into the hospital. It did not talk about how to prevent them from getting in there. So understand that. Follow the money. Follow the money. There's too much money in it to fix it. And speaking of diabetes, bringing this in here, people say, well, diabetes run in my family. There's two types of diabetes. Uh, one, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not an expert. One type is uh, one that is you you typically is genetics. And the other type is um, you get it. Like you get it from the, your bad health decisions. These two people right here both have diabetes. They both have to inject themselves. But it wasn't from um, necessarily a bad diet. It was because it was type 1. But type 2, you get that over time because of your bad decisions. controversial and I don't care. I don't care how trendy or cute or fun it seems to be fat. Don't let that shit fuck with your head. Don't let the idea that, oh, I can catch a dick no matter how big I am, cause you to forget about your health and to keep gaining weight. I actually feel kind of guilty for being a part of this movement. And I know it's not my fault or my responsibility to keep other people's health, but being a pioneer in this game, like I literally was one of the first influencers to work with Fashion Nova before they even had a plus size line. So when I say I'm a pioneer, I'm a pioneer. I'm one of the main reasons why we have the plus size fashion industry that we have. And you can argue with anybody, that's the truth. And my point is, is that I see a lot of fat girls who gain a lot of weight from being caught up in this movement and turning around five, six, seven years later talking about, damn, I let my health go to shit. I got this problem now. I'm 400 pounds. I can't do this. I can't do that. Babe, it's not always cracked up to be. Being attractive, being able to still wear nice clothes is not the end all be all. You got to really think about your health. Because when you're in your 20s, you think that life is just rainbows and candy. You don't even think about the future. But when you start creeping up in age, babes, it's going to catch up to you. I don't care what nobody say. I'm not saying that every fat person is unhealthy. Hello, I'm fat. I'm not claiming that you got to hate fat people. That's literally the opposite of what I'm saying. But let's be fucking for real. Health is real. Organs failing is real. Diabetes, heart disease, all that shit is real, okay? It's not fat phobic to care about your health. And if nobody else wants to say it, let me fucking tell you the truth. Love yourself at any size. Wear the clothes you want to wear. But don't forget that your heart has to beat, babes. Don't forget that your blood sugar has to keep a balance, babe. No amount of Instagram pictures looking cute and being an influencer wearing a size whatever you are is going to stop your heart from not beating if you're eating bacon every day. And this is coming from someone who's learning those fucking, those, those, those lessons now, myself. So to the younger girls, the younger generation, take care of your health. It's not fat phobic to take care of your health. It's not a joke. And I'm saying this out of love, not out of self-hate. I see a lot of my fellows fellow content creator, fellow plus size, fellow bloggers, whatever you want to call them, plus size models, now talking about wanting to get healthy, now talking about needing to da 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 Because five, six, seven years ago, when they were 22, when they were 21, 25, it wasn't a problem. Now you're 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, whatever the case is, and you're like, damn, I can't get pregnant. I'm getting, I have this problem. I got that problem. The problems creep up, babe. And the reality is loving yourself also includes taking care of your body. If you want this body to last 100 years, you got to take care of it. So don't let me, don't let nobody else convince you that taking care of your health is fat phobic. And if somebody's telling you that, it's because they're miserable and they want you to die and stay fat like them. I took a lot of heat when I started talking about my weight loss journey and now everybody else suddenly want to talk about it. I wonder why. She said it. <laughs> she said a lot. She said a lot. But that's people don't understand. And you think it's a, they're making fun of me because I'm fat thing. It's not the case. It's, it's literally health issues that come with being overweight. There's a lot of things that, that are a struggle when you are overweight. There is a such thing as a healthy weight. So when you hear people say, well, not everyone that's overweight is um, is unhealthy. Well, it's kind of, kind of is like that. It kind of is like that. I heard another girl compare um, a famous, I won't say her name because I don't want to seem like I'm picking at her. A lot of the internet picks at her every two seconds. But they were saying how this um, overweight performer dances on a stage and, and no one wants to they, they complain about her being overweight, but we go and watch 300-pound um, linemen. Those 300-pound linemen are running faster than, than a lot of you guys, like normal day-to-day -day people. And they're six foot five, six foot six, with 300 pounds carrying themselves. And a lot of them, as soon as they get out of the NFL, guess what they do? They lose the weight. Or just because they're professional athletes doesn't mean they're healthy. We just are entertained by it.
it doesn't one doesn't discredit the other. Unhealthy is unhealthy. If you diet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you lose weight, right? For many of us, we can go on a diet, something like the biggest loser, right? You mm -hmm. go and you strict people, you make them work out for 10 hours a day, and then you feed them 500 calories. For most people, they will acutely lose weight. But 96% of those participants in The Biggest Loser regained their weight because their brain worked well. It was supposed to bring them back to store what they needed or what the brain thinks it needs. So willpower, throw that out the window. My last patient that I saw today was a young woman who's 39 who struggles with severe obesity. She's been working out five to six times a week consistently. She's eating very little. Her brain is defending a certain set point. So the debate was um, if obesity, obesity was hereditary and if it's necessarily avoidable. And I'll use, they talk about genetics. I use me and I'll use my brother. My brother, if he eats anything, if we ate the same exact diet, we both ate, let's say, just junk food from for an entire month, I'd probably gain maybe 10 pounds. My brother would almost guarantee gain about 25 pounds. And we could stab the same starting weight, but if we ate the exact same and it was all pizza, burgers, and, and just junk food for an entire month, I could gain probably exact, when I say exact same food, because we've done it, exact same food, I'll gain a couple pounds, he'll gain almost double. Now, I say that to say this, yes, your genetics can control whether you get extremely overweight or obese, but it isn't the reason that you are obese. Your genetics isn't the reason. What you put in your mouth is the reason. And the amount of exercise and, and the, the, your, your calories in versus calories out. One thing she mentioned was willpower. And this may be a reach. But this is why I say everyone should be doing a carnivore diet. Because you don't need necessarily willpower when it comes down to following a diet. Diet, I think the carnivore diet is probably one of the easiest diets to follow and to stay consistent on without having to worry about how much I'm consuming or how little I'm consuming. You just eat till you're satisfied and keep it moving. If that was the case for those people, for anybody that's saying this in my family or runs in my family, we wouldn't be having this discussion. There's old saying, it, it doesn't run in your family. No one runs in your family is a problem. It's, it's, it's a joke, but it's true. It's a lot of truth behind it. There was a time where it was only hunters and gatherers. During that time, there wasn't people that were obese. There wasn't people that were out of shape to the point that they couldn't move because they was actively moving and, and gathering or hunting for their community, which had to keep them in shape. And on top of that, they was eating healthier options. All the options that we have today weren't available. If they were making things out of ingredients like a, a bread or something like that, that was a treat and that was an addition to what they was eating, which their base was meat and or fruit when it was seasonal. If that was the case when people were doing that today, majority of our problems would go completely away when it comes down to health, wellness, staying in shape, being at a healthy weight, things of that nature. This video should be an eye opener for us, for everyone, to just to understand like, yo, it's, it's, this, is, this is getting out of hand. Like I said, follow the money. There's a reason that we're, we're having discussions about obesity because the people that are encouraging us to eat whatever are the people who profit the most from it. If I could find a picture that was a, a, a magazine cover um, today versus the magazine cover back in those times. Like they're, they're pushing this narrative because they want us out of shape because it's profitable for them. It's profitable for them. There's a lot of money in this. Follow the money. If you follow the money, you'll see people's motives, you'll see people's intentions, and you'll see why we're headed the way we're headed. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you all enjoyed it. For the people that are following the carnivore, if you think this could be a solution for everyone, Please write it and, and, and leave your comments below on how the carnival diet has helped you. Other than that, y'all know the YouTube stuff. Like, share, subscribe, get all that stuff out the way. Follow me on Instagram, the band man 16 Other than that, I'll see y'all next time.